Hey, my 1300 students. Uh, we are about to start a big, big project. It's called the Ethical Viewpoints Project or assignment. And it's my favorite assignment in this whole semester. Um, it's a little involved. However, I wanna start out by telling you what the purpose of the project is. And once you understand the purpose, the rest of it will be a little easy to do, but you've gotta understand the purpose. The purpose of this assignment is for you to use reliable information to make a decision, okay? Use reliable information to make a decision. I'm gonna read for you specifically what these objectives are. The first one says to find credible, reliable sources of information using a library database. You're gonna learn how to critically review scholarly articles to determine suitably for supporting a viewpoint. You're gonna learn how to clarify and evaluate ethical viewpoints by various authorities. And you're gonna learn how to cite your sources, pardon me, in MLA style, okay? Now, let me start out by showing you what I'm reading from. Of course, I'm reading from my tablet, but where you can find this is in Blackboard. I want you to go to Unit 2, and the Ethical Viewpoints Worksheet is what I'm reading from, okay? So if you don't have that out in front of you right now, pause the tape. You can tell how old I am because I said tape. Pause the video, oh wow, <laughs> and get that worksheet where you can read it along with me, okay? So pause the video if you need to, and then come on back, all right? So here's the other thing that you need to know. We're going to be you are going to be selecting a controversial topic that you know little about. I'm gonna repeat that again. You're going to select a controversial topic that you know little about. Let me tell you why you need to choose something that you know little about. You don't need to choose a topic that you already have an opinion about, okay? You need to choose something that you don't know about so that the learning experience of determining whether the sources you are reading are reliable, are accurate, are believable, are credible, okay? That's the lesson that you're learning, okay? So one thing that I tell students every semester that we do this, do not choose abortion. Do not, okay? Most people already have one opinion about it, one way or the other. And the point of this assignment is not the opinion. I wish I could emphasize that even more. The point of this assignment is not what you think about it. What most people ask me at some point during this assignment every semester is, Dr. Price, um, are you looking for us to have a particular point of view about these issues? No, I am not. I get very frank with most people and I say, I don't care. I do not care what you think about abortion. I do not care what you think about environment safety. I don't care about any of those things. What I do care about is, do you know how to select reliable sources and then weigh the information in those sources to determine a decision about anything, okay? And in this case, we're talking about ethical topics, all right? So we have a database that I'm gonna introduce you to in just a few minutes, and that database has all kinds of topics in it. Topics that you would not even imagine that are actually current issues in today, for today. You're gonna select one of those issues, it doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's not abortion, okay? Select something that you don't know very much about, okay? And then from there, I'm gonna teach you how to follow what's called the trap method, okay? So that you can run those sources through that trap method to determine, is this a source I should consider when making my decision? There's a story that I wanna tell you that is um, very, very pertinent to this assignment that we're doing. It's a lesson in looking at the sources before you decide to believe something. Okay, so now we are in the era of social media. You can look at any social media platform and get all kinds of facts, okay? 
And it's up to you to be a very smart person to determine whether or not, is this something I should go for? Or is this something that is not reliable, something that is not credible? Now the word for believable is credible, okay? So uh, several years ago, there was a pizza place. I cannot call the state where the pizza place is. It's still there now, unless it's been shut down by COVID. All right, but uh, the rumor, there was a rumor that from this pizza place, that Bill and Hillary Clinton were running a pedophile ring from the back of that pizza joint. Okay, so some of you may be looking at me saying, oh my gosh, I can't believe that's real. Look it up. It's very, very true. This is what happened. The part that's true is there was a rumor that that is what they were doing. Be very careful about what you're listening to, what you're hearing. There was a rumor about that being the case, that there was a pedophile ring being run out of this pizza joint, okay? The rumor spread on social media like wildfire, and those who were not for Hillary, not for her husband, had you know political views that opposed to theirs, whatever reasons, they believed that this was true. This rumor spread so pervasively and was told so convincingly that there was one gentleman who was so upset that the Clintons were doing this, he decided to take the law in his own hands. He decided to drive from another state and go with his gun inside the pizza place to shoot someone, okay? He did that. He got in his car, he rode across the country, can't remember what state he started in, but he ended up where this pizza joint was and he was stopped before he killed anyone. But I always tell that story every semester because number one, there was no pedophile ring in that pizza joint. It was only a rumor, okay? So the true part of that story is that there was a rumor. The true part of the story was not that there was actually a pedophile ring in the pizza joint. And it was not that the pedophile ring was run by the Clintons, all of it was just a lie, but it was told so convincingly that people believed it. You could not have told them anything different. They did not believe the opposite was true. And it was so dangerous that people almost lost their lives. Now that's a very extreme example of checking out your sources before you choose to believe something, but the same thing applies. The same thing applies about a rumor that you hear about some friend. The same thing applies about things you read on the internet, things that you read in a book. Who are the sources? Why should we believe them? What gives them the credibility that when they speak on this particular topic that we should listen? That's what you're going to be learning in this lesson. So here we are inside of Blackboard and we're going to click on courses to go to our particular course. And I teach EDUC 1300, several sections of it. I'm just going to pick this one. This may not be your particular class, but it will work for our purposes today. Once we get here, we're going to find the assignment by going to my assignments. Click on unit two. And how do I know? To click on Unit 2 for the Ethical Viewpoints assignment, well, on the outside of the folder, I can see what is inside the folder, and there is the Ethical Viewpoints assignment. So we're going to click on Unit 2 and scroll down a little bit, and here is the Ethical Viewpoints assignment. The first thing we're going to download is this document called the Assignment Instructions. Now, I'm going to not click on it here because I already have the instructions pulled up. But when you click on this, it's going to ask you to download it. You can save it to your computer and you can use it as necessary. Now, the next thing we're going to do before we go into those instructions, we need to have our topics available to us. So I'm going to open a new window and I'm going to Google El Centro Library. Now let's be careful because the first thing that usually pops up for me 
is the city of El Centro, and that's not the library we want. Let's scroll down here to Libraries Dallas College. That's what we want. So let's scroll here, click here. And our new library page looks like this. You're going to scroll all the way down to Research Guides. Click on Research Guides. You're going to get a new screen with all of the colleges listed. Click on El Centro Research Guides. The next screen will be a list of classes in alphabetical order. And our class is Learning Framework, so we're going to scroll all the way down to the L's and click on Learning Framework. And there we go. And then we're going to scroll down a little bit more. This link right here, Best Bet Serves Issues Researcher. That's the link we want. So now we've got two things that are opening. We've got our assignment, our ethical viewpoints assignment instructions. We've also got this page that's loading and when it loads, you're gonna see lots of topics. So while this is loading, just a reminder of the purpose. I've said this in our two previous videos that I posted to YouTube already. You're learning to weigh options weigh the credibility of those two options before you make a decision. It's a life skill that you won't need just for this assignment. It's a life skill you're going to need for the rest of your life. There are grown people walking around who don't know how to hear one side of the argument, consider where another side of the argument is coming from, and then make a decision based upon that without getting into fights with people, arguments online, back and forth. It happens all the time. Just turn on the news, watch what our government is doing, watch what people are doing, get on social media, watch what they're doing as well. This page is taking a long time to load. While it's loading, let's go over here and take a look. So again, you're going to be looking at credible sources. And let me back up. You are determining whether or not sources are credible so that you can consider them in decisions that you make. Okay? So the first thing you're going to do is step one. You're going to select a topic. Let's see if we're up and loaded over here. We are not. So Okay, there we go. This may not give you another page to log into. It probably will just take you directly to these topics. Sometimes uh, this one asks me to log in again, and so I humor it, and I just go ahead and do that. Okay, here are the topics. All of these topics, I mean, just bunches and bunches and bunches of them. These are topics that seem to be trending right now. We know Corona is, we know police brutality is. So all of these things are current topics, but if you don't see something that's interesting to you there, oh, and by the way, there are arrows over here where you can click and get even more, okay? Again, I'm gonna tell you, do not choose abortion because most people already have an opinion about it. And if you go into this project with a made up mind, you will miss the whole point of the exercise. And so no one is going to choose abortion. You've got plenty of others to choose from, okay? For today's lesson, we're gonna choose something in crime and punishment and criminal justice. And the one we're gonna look at specifically is prison reform, simply because, as this one pulls up, if you go to the student sample, and I'll show you where I found that student sample. When you go back here to our Blackboard, here it is, example of a completed assignment. That's what this is right here. And this student sample is on the penal system, which is why we have chosen this one to go through as, our, as we're learning how to do it, all right? So let's scroll down here. You're going to see a little paragraph about the prisoners, the populations in prisons. And the first thing you're going to see under that is your research question. This is the research question that you're going to copy word for word into your assignment. Here's the student sample. This research question was um, uh, written a few years ago, so it's just a little bit different than this one, but it means the exact same thing. You, but you're going to copy it word for word under research question, which brings me to one other thing. This assignment worksheet, when you click on this assignment worksheet, you're gonna get a blank worksheet that looks like this, 
Okay, so when I say you're going to take your assignment and copy the research question word for word, it's going to go here. But before you copy it there, you're going to delete the directions. Okay, this is a PDF, so I won't be able to delete it, but I'm highlighting it to let you know you're going to delete those directions. Once you delete it, you're going to take your research question and copy it word for word right there. Okay, underneath that, we've got two viewpoints. Here's viewpoint one. Here's viewpoint two. Underneath the title of viewpoint one, we have the actual viewpoint, this statement. Rehabilitation reduces recidivism and decreases the amount of taxpayer money that is spent to maintain our currently overcrowded prisons. Recidivism means people go back over and over again, okay? This viewpoint says, in other words, that yes, there should be changes in the prison and penal system because if prisoners are rehabilitated, they don't go back as often, and the amount of money that taxpayers pay is less to maintain overcrowding and all of that. People pay less money if people don't go back to prison. That's viewpoint one. Viewpoint two says, no, on the other hand, this is the negative side, prisons should be used to punish criminals and ensure public safety, not to enhance personal growth of inmates. So in other words, we don't send the prisoners there in order to get rehabilitated, to get life lessons, to get personal growth opportunities. They're going to be punished. That's what this second viewpoint is. Right now, you are not supposed to be making up your mind. Pretending that this is a topic that you know very little about, a topic that you don't already have your mind made up about, okay? Your mind should be open at this point, thinking, okay, I'm here to learn about these two viewpoints. I'm going to examine, hope, uh, pick out two credible resources. I'm going to examine them by seeing if they meet the trap test. And if they do, then I'll consider these sources in making my decision. Okay, so that's something else I want to emphasize to everyone. Whatever choice you make for your topic, you need to choose a topic that you don't know a lot about already. That's why we can't choose abortion. Whatever topic you know a lot about, do not choose that. Choose something that you don't know very much about. I also encourage you to think about your career choice, the field you wanna go into. Choose a topic that's related to that field. That would be helpful to you, okay? Let's look at the next thing. Underneath each one of these viewpoints, there are three titles. Each of these titles is the title of an article, okay? Viewpoint is here. Titles of articles are under here in blue print. You're gonna choose one of these titles. Doesn't matter which one you choose, choose one of them. And you're gonna apply the trap test to that article and determine whether or not it's credible. So I wanna be clear about these titles here underneath. Each of these titles in the blueprint, each one is the title of an article. You're gonna select one of these articles. It doesn't matter which one of these. You're going to read that article and you're going to find quotes in that article that support, support this viewpoint. You will repeat that process for viewpoint two. You'll select one of these articles. It doesn't matter which one. You will read that article and find quotes that support viewpoint two. I also wanna clarify, I've been pointing to the viewpoint, but we need to make sure we understand this statement underneath the title viewpoint one is viewpoint one. This statement under the title viewpoint two is viewpoint two. One mistake that some people have made over the semesters that I've worked with them, some people have thought that these titles are the viewpoint. That is not correct. The viewpoint is the statement underneath this title. These are titles of articles. These are titles of articles. This statement under viewpoint two is the viewpoint. Let's go back to our assignment sheet. Okay, so we're selecting a topic. We've done that already. It's gonna be that research question on the penal code. 
We chose the SERS researcher. We got our list of topics. Here's where we are, the research question, the viewpoint one, viewpoint two. These are articles. Okay, our next step is to quote it. We're gonna go back to our topics. We're gonna choose one of these articles. Okay, so let's click on one and go inside. Now I'm not gonna read this article to you because we don't have time to do that. However, let's go back and look at our viewpoint and look at what kinds of quotes you should be choosing. Now, when we say quotes, what I mean by that is you're gonna find a statement in the article. It doesn't necessarily have to be something that someone said that is already in quotes in the article. It could be, but it doesn't have to be. It could be just a statement, but it won't just be any statement. It's gotta be a statement that supports what this viewpoint is saying. So if I read an article and the article says something like, there should be rehabilitation in prisons uh, because being in prison more than two or three years is bad for your well-being. That might be a true statement. It might be a statement you happen to agree with, but does it appear in this viewpoint? There's nothing about prisoners well-being in this viewpoint, number one. So that would not be a good quote to choose. You need to choose a quote that mentions something about how prisoners don't need to return over and over again. Remember the recidivism? Rehabilitation reduces recidivism. Find a quote that is pointing to the fact that if there's rehabilitation, people don't go back to prison over and over again. Or you can find a quote that says rehabilitation is good because it's going to ultimately decrease the amount of monies that taxpayers pay. That's another point that this viewpoint makes, okay? And our prison is overcrowded. Maybe we need to revamp it so that there's not so much crowding in the prisons. Any quote along those lines would fit this viewpoint because that's what this viewpoint is talking about. Nothing else, okay? Same thing over here. Prisons should be used to punish criminals and ensure public safety, not to enhance the personal growth of inmates, okay? So if you find a quote that says something like, um, no, prisons need to remain exactly the way they are because it's working, okay? That may be written in the article. It may be a viewpoint that is against changes in the prison system, but it does not support viewpoint number two. It says nothing about prisons being okay the way they are. This viewpoint says, no, we don't need to change anything because going to prison is not about personal growth. Your quotes that you choose need to be along the lines of this viewpoint, okay? Let's go back to our assignment instructions. This says that you're gonna choose four to eight quotes. Hear me very carefully. You can only choose, you may only choose two. You can choose four to eight if you want to, but I'm gonna lower that minimum to two quotes. Okay, so two quotes will be the minimum that you find. If you would like to find more than two quotes, that's great too. But two is enough for what we're doing, all right? Now that you have chosen two quotes from an article, one of these to support viewpoint one, you've chosen two quotes from one of these articles to support viewpoint two, you've gone back to your worksheet and you've put those direct quotations right here. You have erased the directions and then you put your quotes there, okay? This is for viewpoint one. Do the same thing for viewpoint two, okay? Now it's time for the trap test. Let's go look at our instructions. It says evaluate it using the trap test, all right? You can read this part on your own. I'm gonna skip down to here. T stands for time. When was the article written? You do not need to choose an article that's written longer than three years ago. It's too old and you cannot use it for your consideration. You've got to eliminate it, go on to the next article. R stands for relevance. Now here's where these quotes come in handy. Remember back up here, we chose two quotes from each article. If you chose the correct quotes, R is easy because here you're gonna summarize those two quotes. Four to eight sentences, give or take, okay? Use those quotes, summarize, put it in your own words, and that's gonna show the relevance of the article that you've selected. Okay, authority is the next one. Now, authority is what A stands for. Authority does not stand for author, okay? Here, you are looking for 
who or what organization in the article is the credible source that we can count on, that we can believe. For instance, this is the example that I gave during live instruction. Let's say that I, Dr. Price, I'm going to write an article and I'm claiming to be an expert on this thing. I'm gonna write an article about how to change the engine in a 1972 Mustang. Right there, you should have all kinds of pauses going off in your head, red bells, because Dr. Price does not know anything about changing an engine. And so if I wrote one and claimed to be the authority on changing the engine in anything, you should be suspect, you should be worried. You should say, no, 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 no. She does not know what she's talking about. She has no experience, no schooling, no work in that area at all. However, if I wrote an article on that same topic, changing the engine, however, when I wrote it, before I wrote it, I went and I consulted people who work at the Buick dealer, people who work in the shop at the Buick, Buick dealer, uh, not Buick, I said Mustang, people who work at the Mustang shop. If I talked to someone who built Mustangs, and wrote based upon what he said, what she said, okay? Now there is a credible authority figure in my article because that person that I quoted is the person you want to say, okay, that person said it, who's worked with Mustangs, who's changed engines, who's uh, uh, written books about changing engines in the Mustang. Yes, I can use this article because even though Dr. Price doesn't know much about it and she's the author, she consulted and wrote based upon what these people who do have credibility, she's writing based upon what they've said. I could cite those people. You wouldn't be listing me as the authority, as the author. You would be listing those people that I quoted as the authority. Okay, let's switch it around a little bit more. Let's say, for instance, that I did write an article. This time my artic article is about uh, instructional management, instructional strategies. Um, it's about best ways to conduct summer school, okay? You might look at that and say, okay, what does Dr. Price know about that? Has she been in schools before? Has she worked in schools? Did she go to school to be an educator? You might look me up on the web and say, wait, yes, she sure did. She has a degree, she went to school to learn to be a teacher. Then she went to school to learn to be a principal. Then she went to school to learn to uh, work with curriculum and instruction. She has her PhD in that. Okay, she's a credible source when it comes to education matters. She's got 30 years experience. She's a credible source, okay? So in that case, the author would be the authority. Let's say for instance, I didn't know about those things, but I consulted someone who did. Those people would be the authority. So. We are looking in that article for who is the voice that we should listen to because they have experience, they're the experts, they are part of organizations that uh, specialize in those things. That's who the authority is. Okay, then we have to look at P, proof. What in the article presents facts based upon the evidence given in research? So are there results of surveys, results of research, results of legal decisions? What proof do we have that this viewpoint is accurate based upon the research? So let's go back to our penal system uh, example again. Let's say we said there was a research study done and in the research study, 30,000 prisoners who were rehabilitated uh, 28,000 of them didn't go back to prison ever again. Okay, that's statistics. That's what you would put in your proof section, okay? All right, your article that you selected must meet all four of these. Time, written within three years, relevance, summar summarization of the two quotes you chose, the authority, who is the person who's credible, who's the organization that's credible that we should listen to in this article and proof what evidence, what research, what statistics did you find to prove that viewpoint. If the article passes the trap test, you can consider it in making your decision. You're gonna do that for the article you chose for viewpoint one, and you're gonna do that for the article that you chose for viewpoint two. Okay, so let's go back over to our worksheet. Okay, so we found it for step for viewpoint one, 
direct quotations, trap test for this one, trap test for that one in viewpoint one. Okay, we've done all of that. The last thing before we do our reflection is the MLA citation. So let's go back over to our assignment piece again. Step four is cite it. So the article's title, the person who wrote the article, the date it was written, and the place where you can find it, all of that is part of what's called a citation. And there's an easy way for you to do that in the SERS research system. So what you can do is you can uh, find your uh, article that you used in the SERS database. You should already be there. There's a little button on that page called Cite. You're going to click that, okay? And when you click it, that's going to be on the page where your article was. Okay, let's see if we can look at that real quickly. Let's go to this article. Let that load. Okay, here it is right there, Cite. So you click Cite, and when you click that, okay, here it is already done for you. All you have to do is say copy, and then on your, uh, I'm going to go to the worksheet over here, and let's see, this isn't in, it's a PDF, so I won't be able to paste it, but here's where you would paste it, okay? All right, so that's how you're going to get your citing. Very, very easy. One thing I will tell you when you copy and paste, once you finish copying and pasting whatever you're doing on your whole assignment, select the whole piece and put it in one font and one size font. I'm going to stop here and show you of an example of what not to do and what to do when it comes to fonts and sizes of your font. The font is the style of the text on your page. Now what you see in front of you is a sentence that's actually a learning objective that I use in my teacher prep class. So what this sentence says and how it's formed has nothing to do with our ethical viewpoints project, but what I want to show you is you don't want to turn in a product that looks something like this. And if you simply copy and paste all of the pieces you need for your ethical viewpoints project onto a Word document and you don't go back to make all of the font style the same and the size the same, you can turn in something that looks similar to this. What we see here is we see part of the sentence in blue, part of the sentence is not in bold, part of the sentence is in bold, some of the words are small, some of the words are large, you don't want to turn in anything like that, okay? So here's how you fix it. So let's pretend that this is my Ethical Viewpoints product. I have done all of my pieces. I've copied and pasted, and my content is correct. Everything that I've written is correct. Let's pretend that what you see is that, a correct version of your Ethical Viewpoints project. But the problem is, is raggedy. Raggedy meaning that the fonts are different, the sizes are different. You don't want to turn this in. This looks horrible. Let's fix it. So let's start by selecting the entire product. And you can do that one of two ways. The way I just did that, I pressed on my cursor, my mouse, excuse me, on the left side, do a left click and drag the mouse all the way across. That's one way to select. Another way to select is to go up here to select and say select all, all right? And now that you've done that, you can go up to this box and choose the font. Usually Calibri is a great font. You can choose it here. You can choose Times New Roman, okay? Do not choose this fancy stuff down here. Now Arial is fine. That's a nice font. Arial, Times New Roman, Calibri. Let's stick to those three options, okay? just one of those, and let's go with Times New Roman. Now we have the font is the same as far as the style, but we still have issues with the color, we still have issues with the, the bold, we don't want it all in bold, so let's go up here and click this B, all right? If I clicked it once, everything becomes bold, click it again, nothing is bold. Okay, we're better, but we're still not finished. We still now have some small, some large. Let's go over here, 
to the drop down menu, the best size to choose is either number 11 or 12. I like 12 because I'm an old lady and I need to see big print. So let's go with 12. All right, we're almost finished. There's one piece that's still not right. That part there is in light color and the rest of it is dark. So again, we're gonna select the whole thing. This time we're gonna go up to this space here. We want it all in black. So let's say B, uh, let's go to this black here for automatic. And there you go. Now you have something that looks professional. Now you also are gonna have titles in here. So for instance, let's say this was my relevance section. It is perfect. Ooh, let's spell relevance correctly. How about that? Yeah, there we go. It's okay to uh, have your relevance word in bold or any of your titles in bold. As a matter of fact, that actually does look professional. So let's put that one piece in bold. I'm gonna highlight it and then go up here and click B for bold. You'll have several sections that looks something like this. Okay, so let's pretend like that's your relevant section and let's pretend like this is your authority section. Let's pretend like this is our final product. I've got bolded titles and all of my font underneath those titles is exactly the same size, color, and style. All right, so that's your MLA citation and we've done the whole thing. The last thing you're gonna do is you're going to put your reflection. Okay, the last piece is right here, reflect on it. Now you're gonna write something two to 500 words. Remember, I don't look at the word count to see that your words are accurate. I'm looking at what you say, your content. So if you've got 190 words, but it's good stuff that you wrote, it answers all these questions. You don't have to worry about it, it's great. If you wrote 600 words, uh -huh. but you've answered all these questions, you're doing just fine. So don't worry about that, all right? So here are the questions you're looking at. What was your viewpoint before you started your research? Do you still think about that issue in the same way? Here are, you're gonna look at all those different questions, but in a nutshell, this is what you're saying. Here's my decision on this particular topic. I've decided this because you can say that you kind of had an understanding in the very beginning and you are uh, now more knowledgeable based upon the information you read in these two credible sources. Point out the pieces in the credible sources that spoke to you the most, that helped you make your decision. And with that, you can say you are keeping your mind the same, the way, the same way it was. I haven't changed my mind about the penal code of the penal system. I think it needs to be rehabilitated, okay? because, and you go back to those articles and you pick out from the articles what supports that decision for you. You could say, you know, I thought that rehabilitation was the way to go, but after I've done this research, I don't think it's important anymore. So no, I don't think there needs to be any changes. And here's why. And you go back to those articles and you pick out what those articles said that support that thought. Or you could, which is the most, um, important one in my opinion, because it means that you are open-minded, it means that you are listening, it means that you are not shutting people down just because they disagree with you. You could write something such as, you know, I had this opinion when I started, I'm gonna maintain my opinion because I still believe that blah, blah, blah is true based upon, and you go back to those articles, you pick out what it was that helped you maintain that opinion. But you should also be able to say, but I understand better where the other side is coming from when they say that when you go to prison, it's not supposed to be there for rehabilitation. People are being punished. I understand where they're coming from because, but I'm still gonna keep my opinion the same as it was when I began. Any number of those, any one of those routes is wonderful as long as you show from your research the pieces of information that helped you determine what you decided. I can't stress enough that your final decision is not the point of this exercise, this assignment. How you reached your decision is what's so important. Remember the people in Pizzagate. Whatever they decided to believe, they did not research their sources. All they did was go on the internet, they looked at some kind of inflammatory, excitable information, 
they decided that Bill and Hillary Clinton had run this pedophile out of the pedophile ring out of the pizza uh, joint, and they decided it was true. They did not research it for credible sources. That's what I'm asking you to do, to make your decision based upon credible sources. There's a few things I want to emphasize before I close. Uh, you are not writing a paper. When you submit your paper, it's when you submit your assignment, it's going to look just like this student example. Okay, use this worksheet to help you organize how you put all of this on your assignment. Erase the, the uh, directions before you write your responses. Okay, put it all in the same font so that you don't have some blue writing, some red writing, some big font, some little font. Some in italics, some in not italics. Make sure it looks nice and clean when you turn it in, okay? If when you are looking at your articles, you get over here, ready to select your articles, and you uh, find that all three of these, none of them reach meet the trap test, which is very rare, but it happens sometimes. You're gonna go here for more sources. You're not gonna go way out on the web someplace. You're gonna go right there, okay? Uh, the one thing I wanted to point out again is this statement from Dr. King at the beginning. It says education must enable one to sift and weigh evidence to discern the true from the false, the real from the unreal, and the facts from the fiction. The function of education, therefore, is to teach one to think intensively and to think critically. If ever you read that article, The Purpose of Education by Dr. King, it's an excellent piece. And that's one of the main points that he makes. So that's it, everybody. That's the Ethical Viewpoints assignment. I told you before that it's my favorite project or assignment in this course because it helps you to think. It doesn't matter what your opinion turns out to be. It matters how you got to that opinion. Did you weigh credible sources before you made a decision? If you have any trouble with the assignment, you have my information. You've got my email, c-e-c-e-l-i-a dot p-r-i-c-e at d-c-c-c-d dot edu. My phone number is 469-454-8589. I also offer two sessions where you can hear and interact with me uh, regarding doing this assignment. And so for the fall 2020 semester, those times are 1030 and 7 p.m. You can attend one or both. I've had some people come to both because they wanted to hear it again. They also wanted to see the video. Those folks did a really good job because they got a, a good understanding. If you are in my eight-week course for fall 2020, we meet on Tuesdays, 1030 and 7 p.m. If you are in my 16-week course, fall 2020, we meet on Thursdays, 1030 and 7 p.m. That's it, everybody. Do well on this assignment. Bye.